So the only thing left to do now, dun dun dun, move the sump. I've removed the sump pan from the bike. Uh, I was a little bit foxed by two recessed holes in the centre which I thought might hold bolts but they're actually indents for this and for this. So no, no bolts in them. All the bolts are on the surrounding edges. So now the next job, looking up at the sump, I have to remove anything that projects down. So there's the oil scavenger to come off and there's a couple of pipes there that need to come off as well. I need to make that as flat as possible because that is where the support is going to have to sit to jack the engine up, support it while the uh, engine mounts are removed. Right, the pipes and the scavenger removed, a small block of wood cut to size and used in place and a jack now supporting the front end of the engine. I can start removing the engine mounts. These hero blobs or whatever you might want to call them have got an allen headed bolt in the centre and a standard nut on the end, it's not a captive nut. I've removed the one already from the right hand side which means at the front it's currently unsupported by a bolt on one side but my point being they're quite easy to remove. I won't remove that spacer just yet. Right, we've disconnected this mount at the back, I've pulled the bolt away so there's now no support at the upper gearbox. Rather annoyingly this little plastic filler cap is held by a tab, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, held by a tab right in there, it's there, onto this bracket which means I can't easily pull this bracket away. It will undo, but unfortunately how do you get in there to undo it? Whoever designed these things really didn't think it through at all. Anyway, <coughs> I've also removed the front uh, mounting bolts from both sides now. So I've just got to remove these brackets. And technically the only thing holding the engine now, apart from the jack, is the lower rear bolt. By the way, I put a block of wood in front of the engine and across the downspars just in case that engine rolls forward just to stop it hitting off the frame. Having eyed this up I don't think that that um, housing at the back of the oil filter is going to clear the frame. It's a bit too close. So it's going to have to come off and I think the thing that's holding it is that big nut in the centre. I can't see anything else. Uh, but before that I've got to release that pipe that's going into it. So that's that housing off. The front mounting brackets are removed completely. The rear mounting bracket is off. I've just got to remove that coolant filler so that I can take that bracket out. So at the moment the only bolt in there is the lower mounting. Okay, all the mountings are out, the engine is now loose in the frame, uh, but I'm still unable to get these throttle bodies out. I've actually let the engine drop quite a bit to try and give me some clearance around this uh, air box. So all this cabling is now nice and loose, there's nothing restricting it in that direction but I cannot get it to separate from these rubbers. Making progress here, I've managed to get two rails underneath the engine, which are now sitting under the block. So the engine is supported, it slides on the rails okay. The jack's now not actually doing anything. But, to get the clearance from here, that hard pipe's in the way and I'm going to have to take the, head, uh, the rocker cover off. The engine is out of the frame. Unfortunately it didn't go easily. I had to take the rocker cover off and also 
The block of wood that the engine was sat on didn't slide along the rails. The engine actually rolled off it, which meant I had to slide along the engine on those mating surfaces. The rails have rubbed against the frame and damaged the paint and the engine caught in the frame as well. Also scratched it. Start to prepare the replacement engine. We get the oil filter off it. We get the pan off it, or the sump, sorry. And then we've got to swap the engine over. I think I've damaged that on the other engine. I think it caught because it hangs lower than the mating face on the sump. And I'll bet you I've broken it off. Anyway, let's get this off. Get the oil filter and that housing off. And then we'll swap places. Get ready to put the new replacement engine in. Well, I'm really sorry folks, you missed a lot of the fun there. I had to enlist help. And even then, it was a real struggle getting her in. Uh, we did eventually get her in, but not after causing more paint damage to her. Unfortunately, even in spite of using cloths across the frame, it scratched right through the cloths. I did put the throttle bodies on before I got the engine fully into the frame and they just got in the way. So at the moment they're still sat on top so I've still got to get those back on. Um, we had a problem where we couldn't get the engine mounts aligned. At the moment they're still not fully tightened. However, it turned out that when we were putting <coughs> the engine in, the chain caught against the sprocket cover. So I had to whiz off the sprocket cover and as soon as that was done, the engine was able to straighten up and all the bolts went into place. I'm not sure about this engine. And the reason is, where we've got this little boss here, yeah, sticking out, on this engine it's blanked off. However, on the old engine, there is a sensor in it. We've got a sensor here. I don't know what it's sensing. I'll have to do a bit of research. That's the only difference so far that I've been able to find. I'm going to have to pinion the engine forward a bit to get the injector rail back on. I'm going to have to undo that upper bolt, remove the front mountings with the jack underneath the engine to support it and then lower the engine at the front to allow the engine to pivot forward slightly as far as the frame rails will allow it to. So I've then got enough space between that rear frame rail and the inlet rubbers to allow the throttle bodies to go back into place. Another thing I've got to be careful of is the routing of all the wires. Right, we're going to start putting things back together by assembling all the uh, scavenger pipes and scavenger onto the underside of the sump and then put the sump pan back on it. Okay, I'm going to do this with the um, removed engine. Yes, it allows a better view than trying to get a camera underneath the bike and uh, try to get a good image that way. So this is the replacement of the sump and the oil pipes and oil scavenger um, that were removed to get the clearance to get the engine out of the frame. As usual, we need to go around and uh, clear all the gasket faces. Here I'm particularly looking to see, as the engine has been slid around, has it caused any damage on these surfaces? It's very important to ensure that these surfaces are clean and smooth. And fortunately these are so smooth actually, that I can see a reflection in them. It's an almost mirror type finish. It's a lovely bit of machining. Okay, the first device that's going to go in is this. I've got to be honest, I have no idea what it is. It has an O-ring there, which uh, 
I'll have a close look at. Yeah, that seems to be in good order. And that belongs in there. Next, put the small pipe on. You can see there's one O-ring missing from it. Now fortunately it is the O-ring that's in there. So no problem. We'll give that a clean up. Make sure the O-ring's in place there, which of course it is. Now you can't get this in backwards, I mean it's just literally impossible. It is designed so that it will only go one way round. Need to go in. Initially I'm just going to loose thread them in. When they were put in at the factory these would have had thread lock on them. Because obviously the last thing you want is bolts falling out into the sump. These should be properly torqued down, especially given as they are into the sump. Next is the larger pipe, again O-rings in place on it, give it a swift clean up, remove any loose debris, dust, fluff and again this can only go one way round. Now obviously it would appear that it can go any one of two ways round but the bolt holes on the, black, uh, the, bolt holes on the brackets, the plates, want to line up so it has to go one way only. The last thing to go in is the scavenger. I do notice that there's a little bit of instant gasket in there. Now the scavenger is a push fit. Again it can only go one way round. It's got a little fork on the bottom plate which lines up with that pin there. So it can only go that way. It can't go that way round. Now that is just a straightforward push fit. There we go. That's the scavenger pushed in. By the way, if you notice this chain is slack, don't worry about it. That is purely for the oil pump. It does not need to be tensioned much. Okay, and that is everything in place now within the sump. So the next thing to do is put the sump on. In this case, I can't put the sump on straight away because there's a little bit of oil in there. There's also a bit of dirt in there. So before this goes on, I'm going to have to clean it out. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bolts to go in. Two of which are short bolts. I beg your pardon, that's not two. I believe, yeah, three are short bolts. All the rest are the same length. There's a little bit of sealant to go around this edge, obviously I'll need to give that a clean up and uh, put the sealant on and then that just gets bolted on and that's it, I'm not even going to bother showing you that, that's so straightforward. Right, we've got the sump on, all the pipe work back in place, the suction filter screen and of course the sump itself all back in place, no problems. I've set up the jack to support the front of the engine and I was about to start on bolting the engine from the frame when I uh, found a problem. This sensor is a pulse sensor that picks up a signal from the camshafts to tell the fuel injection system when to fire. Without it, fuel injection system won't work. Which means basically that that engine won't run, not without that sensor. What I can do is swap the cylinder heads over. Just remove the entire cylinder head and plop it onto that one. 
but you'll notice that that engine is black. This engine is silver grey. Aesthetically that's going to stand out. In a way it's just as well that I haven't connected up the injection system or the exhaust as that will make removing the cylinder head just that little bit easier. <laughs> 